So let's get started into the, to the meat of things here. So let's start first of all with this question of why should we even listen to what students have to say in the first place? Now this is a huge question that we could spend a lot of time talking about and not, that is not the primary point of us being here today, but I think it's really important to kind of address the elephant in the room before we look at actual reports and, and it, make an attempt anyway to answer this question, why should we listen to what students have to say? Because there's a lot of concern or a lot of complaint that students, you know, aren't, they're not experts in pedagogy, they're not experts in our discipline, uh, why should they evaluate me? And the position with idea is students really aren't qualified to evaluate you as a faculty member, but they are a very rich source of data about what goes on in the classroom. If you ask the right questions and then you use that feedback from them appropriately. Just think about this, students observe your instruction more than anybody else on campus. They're in your class day after day for an entire term, entire year in some cases. And when you ask them the right question and you interpret it in a meaningful way, it can actually be a really good source of doing a couple of things, helping you improve your class. And also for those who have to do that sort of thing, it becomes a, a data point, a part of evaluating how a faculty member is doing. And again, that's a big topic we could get a lot more into, but that's kind of the short answer to that. But when you look at this kind of information from students, a single class is only of limited value. You really, when you talk about evaluating faculty, you need to look at multiple courses. You know, what are the themes and what are the ratings for multiple courses? And also over multiple terms. Uh, you, would, you would never evaluate a faculty member based on one class. You look at a collection of data over time. And when you do that, that gives you a big picture of what's going on in the class from the student's point of view. And you put that together with other sources of information like peer evaluation or uh, review of course materials by a committee, that sort of thing. And that gives you the real sense of what's going on in a course. So we listen to students because students have a valid point of view about what's going on in a class. It may be clouded by their limitation of understanding about pedagogy or di the discipline. But when multiple students over multiple courses and multiple terms are saying similar things over and over again, it gives you a perspective that can then be used to uh, either help an instructor improve a class or to do that faculty evaluation thing that people are required to do at institutions. So we have to listen to the, to the student voice, but we have to interpret it in context. If I show you the speedometer here going 50 miles an hour, is that a good or bad thing? Well, the answer, of course, is it depends. It depends, you know, is this a school zone? That's not a very good thing. Is this the open highway? It could be a lot faster. It just depends. Well, likewise, the numbers that the report will give you are not necessarily good or bad all by themselves, especially when you're looking at just one course report. You have to look at it in context. Was this the first time this class was taught uh, or, or the 20th time? And then you also, again, look at multiple classes to start getting the patterns of what students are trying to tell you. So don't get too focused on the numbers, even though the report is actually going to give you a number. So very quickly, what you're going to get from the IDEA report. There are basically four areas where students give you feedback. The first is their progress on learning objectives that you have said are important or essential in your class. Their observations of the frequency of certain teaching methods, and these teaching methods represent all the best uh, practices in higher education. Then they also answer some questions about themselves in the course, and then a couple of global summary items. Overall, this instructor, this course was, was excellent. So those four groups of data are what are a part of the report and are gonna become a part of a useful report for you. Very quickly, you see the 13 learning objectives on the left, the 19 teaching methods on the right. One of the things that we know is that learning objectives and teaching methods are correlated so that each one has their own correlation. You see here the one on the left in red is correlated with these teaching methods on the right. So what I'm saying is for each one of these, when students say they have made progress on this particular learning objective, they also say they've seen these teaching methods more often. And so what that's going to do is give, this, give us the ability to create a report 
that's going to tell you, oh, you might consider doing this teaching method more because it's correlated with progress on a learning objective that you said was, was important or essential in your course. When we look at a report in just a second, that'll make a little bit more sense if, if you're new to that idea. But that's one of the things that's rich about this report is it's not just gonna give you a number, it's gonna give you suggestions about what you might do to improve the course. All right, so let's look at a, a report now. If you don't already know, you, in most campuses, you're gonna log in through the URL you see on your campus, your campus, whatever it is, the name of your school, campuslabs.com, et cetera. And, or you might have a single portal sign on where you uh, log on. But however you do it, that's what you do. Now, if you have your uh, report in front of you, I would encourage you not to look at it just yet, but to um, give me a chance to run through a report and then look back on, on, on yours. So let me jump over into our sandbox. And let's see. So what I'm going to do now is go into a, a rep, an actual report. Actually, this is not an actual report. This is our sandbox. This is kind of junk data, but it will give you the idea. So once you log in to the Campus uh, Labs portal, uh, this is your dashboard. This is what you see. You'll notice up here at the top left that you can change the term to whatever term you want. Uh, in general, as long as your institution is a client of Campus Labs, the data will be there for as far back uh, you know, as that relationship goes. And so that's a nice thing. You can look back at anecdotal data. The course of value and summary reports, the next thing you see there, I'm gonna skip for just now. And then under that, you see a list of your courses. Over on the right, you should have already probably uh, done this, but this is where you select your objectives. This is where you look at the 13. I'll go ahead and show you right, very quickly. But you look at the 13, and then here is where you designate them as minor, important, or essential. You might be at a campus where this is done for you. On some campuses, departments get together and they decide collectively, like for our 101 and 102 courses, these are the learning objectives that make sense, and they might pre select those for you. And so you, maybe you didn't do that, but if um, you're not on that kind of, in that kind of situation, that's where you went to select them. When your report is available, you'll see very clearly uh, the green check mark that it's completed along the res with the response rate. And you can go in here, by the way, and look at that response rate at any time and know how that is going. But when you're ready to look at your report, you simply click on the view results button. And, here we are inside a report. So this is the, the homepage, so to speak, of an individual course report. Not an entire semester, but just an individual course. And we see up at the top the name of the course. So here on the front page, you may ask yourself, well, what am I supposed to look, like, look at? What do these numbers mean? Where do I go? I know one of the things that a lot of people do is uh, they want to go straight to the open comments, and I understand that. You know, you're really curious. Did people say, did students say really nice things about me, or <laughs> did they say nasty things about me? And that's human nature to want to know that, but that, I don't think that's the central part of the course, so I'm going to wait, or the central part of the report. So I'm going to wait and show you that in just a minute, but let me point out what is most important on this report for you. And that's actually right here on, the, on this homepage screen, right in the middle, the progress on relevant objectives. Remember that you have identified hopefully three to five learning objectives as important or essential in this class. And this is a summary of how much progress students said they made on those learning objectives. So for those three or five, in this case, uh, they rated it a 3.6. If we click on this box, we'll go into those details and we see here in this example that there were five. Over on the far left, you see the I or the E that tells you that was designated as important or essential. Then you see the average. On the far right with the circles, you see the distribution of ratings. The box is in the middle, I'll explain in just a minute. But this allows you to go in and look at the individual ratings. And you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself things here like, uh, 
why in this example you see on the screen, the first one here, gaining basic understanding of the subject I said was important, but the third one there I said was essential, and yet they didn't make nearly as much progress, or they didn't report as much progress on that one as they did the one that I said was just important. Why is that? What does that mean? Do students in my other classes say the same thing? Then perhaps this is something I need to, to look into a little bit more closely. So that's one, of the, uh, one example of what you can do with that. So going back to the home page, that's the uh, progress on relevant objectives summary score of all of those items that I've said were important or essential in my course. Let me take a sip of water real quick. Jake, what uh, have I missed or need to highlight so far? Anything, anything there? And uh, uh, nothing specific. Actually, we just had a question come in. Will we have access to all of these slides at the webinar to look over again later? And um, the plan is to at least push the recording out to everyone. But I don't know, David, if you want to address the question about the, the slide specifically. I guess actually thinking about the question, we're actually looking at a live demonstration of the sandbox. There really aren't slides to share other than the initial introductory ones that David shared, which we'd be happy to share with you. Um, so in general, the recording would be the best, the um, best way to review what's being presented so far. Thanks, Jake. Yes, and we also have other uh, resources on our website that I'll show you when we get there. So you're, this isn't your only chance to learn about this stuff. So uh, one of the things that's really unique about uh, the IDEA report is, is that it allows you to make comparisons between your scores and other groups of people to kind of help make sense of what students are saying. And you see that here with a converted average comparison. What this is is a T-score that takes all the scores in the range of this data set, sets the midpoint at 50 and a standard de deviation of 10 on either side. So it's breaking this group breaking the score down into the five groups. And we see here the 42, if I hover over it, it is gonna tell me that that's in the lower 20% of the comparison group, whereas if it were here in the middle, it would be the middle 40% of scores in the comparison group. And what is the comparison group? You see that on the top right of your screen where it says compare to, right now I'm comparing to the entire IDEA database. So this score is being compared to all of the courses at all of the institutions in the entire IDEA database, a lot of courses. But if I click on that, I could change the comparison to other courses in my discipline. So this is a, an accounting course, I'm comparing to other accounting courses, or I could compare just to other courses at my institution. And what's av available to you here depends on uh, the structure of how your courses are set up at your particular institution. And if you go in and see that now, you'll see what's available to you. But making the change there changes uh, the comparison score. If there, if there is a difference, it will change down here. So again, that's a way of making sense of these scores. You know, when you're asking yourself, this, is this good or bad? One of the ways you can answer that question is to say, well, how did I do compared to everyone else in the country or everyone in my discipline or everyone in my um, institution. And wherever you see these converted comparison averages, you have the ability to make those connections or those uh, comparisons. So uh, the rest of the things on this homepage, the, the ratings of summative questions, these are, this is a summary of two questions that students are asked, uh, overall questions. I'm gonna click on that and it will show you those two specific questions. Overall, I rate the instructor as an excellent teacher, and I rate the course as excellent. This is the more subjective satisfaction question coming from students that uh, is important to, to get. And then over on the far left is an average of those two questions. And then we go back to the home page. Again, this far right box is simply an average of those two questions. And then on the far left, this summary score is an average of these other two boxes. So the progress on rated relevant objectives and the ratings of summative questions is summarized in this score on the left. And that is sort of just a cumulative or a, a summary score from the student's point of view about the entire course. How much progress did I make on objectives and overall did I think this instructor and this course was, was excellent or not. Below that are those course and individual questions that I mentioned to you. 
that I think there was much, a lot of coursework in this course. I put forth a lot of effort in this course, those kinds of questions. You see, you can see the raw scores as well as the comparison groups over on the far right where you can see how your students' ratings compared to other groups. And this is there for a couple of reasons. For one thing, it's it's could be really good for you to look at this, like why did students report that this was a really difficult course when this is supposed to be uh, an introductory easy course or maybe vice versa. But they said it was easy, but this is supposed to be the most difficult course in our program. Um, and if students are saying that regularly, then that is good feedback for you. So you can look at this information and kind of interpret it yourself. But it's also there because of something else unique that IDEA does, and that is to create what we call adjusted scores. Right now, we are um, seeing our adjusted scores or adjusted averages, but I can toggle to raw averages. Raw averages means just what it says, the actual numbers that come from students. But the system creates what we call adjusted scores or adjusted averages based on some of these characteristics that you see down here plus class size. So what happens is, through a regression equation, the system will adjust your scores upward a little bit to account for differences that are beyond the control of an, of an instructor. So for example, a really large class of students who say they're not very motivated to take this class, that score will get adjusted upwards a little bit compared to a say a, a 25 student class of students who are fairly motivated or highly motivated. So what it does is it allows you to kind of level the playing field when you're comparing one course to another or one instructor to another across uh, semesters or even within a semester. It just levels the playing field a little bit. So you have the option of looking at that adjusted average or the raw average yourself right here in the report. And most campuses will have a policy when it comes to using these numbers for whatever faculty evaluation goes on that they're gonna look at either the adjusted or the raw averages. Now, for those of you who want to know more about the calculation behind that, we have all kinds of documents and, and explanations on our website. I'll show you uh, when we get through here in a minute. But that's, that's the bottom line. That's the basic thing that you need to know is it adjusts to account for differences beyond the control of the instructor, and you have the option of looking at either one of those right there on the homepage just by toggling between the two. So that is the main page. The next tab, you see beyond the summative page, the, the, main, the main page is the summative page. Click on the formative tab. It takes you into the stuff that gets really rich on this report. So we see here the 19 teaching methods that I mentioned before, they're organized into four categories, teaching essentials, reflective and integrative learning, collaborative learning, and active learning. And then over on the far right, you'll see for each one of them is something called a suggested action. Now for this first one, you see there it says it's not relevant to your objective. So in this case, what it's telling you is that this teaching method is not highly correlated with any of the learning objectives that you have chosen as important or essential in this course. But let's look at the third one, I'm gonna click on it. And we see here that this teaching method over on the far left made it clear how each topic fit into the course. We see my, the students' ratings of it there. It is related to these two teaching methods. I can toggle between them here. That I, These are two teaching methods that I have uh, chosen as important or essential in my class. And then over on the far right, the system is telling you to, you should consider increasing your use of this teaching method because you, you used it less frequently than those teaching classes of a similar size and level of student motivation. And again, you've said that this, uh, these two teaching methods are important or essential in your class, so you should consider doing this teaching method more. It might yield more progress on those two learning objectives in your class. So the idea here is I can look right at this report as soon as I get it and say, hmm, okay, there, there are several things that I should consider doing more. Let me learn more about that teaching method and think, does it apply to my class, does that make sense to me? We don't leave you alone for that. You'll see right here this link idea note. If I click on that, it's going to take me right to this resource on this teaching method. 
that tells me more about it. And we'll see down at the bottom that I have the options for learning more about applying it in the classroom or online. And then under that are resources and references for learning even more. And we are constantly expanding those resources for you, but they're right there available to you from right in the report simply by clicking on that idea note link. Normally you're not going to see that many that need to uh, be increased. This is again a sandbox bit of data here, but uh, a great tool for you in thinking about improving your next course. So one of the things that's, uh, that's really useful for these reports and for those of you who are used to in the past maybe having paper reports is because you get this report right at the end of the semester, you have time to think about this before the next semester. So I would encourage you to do that over the, the holidays and before the next start, semester gets started or even after it gets started, look at this report and think about the suggested action for this uh, course and does that make sense for something that you want to do more of? And again, you have resources for learning about that right there on the website. The third tab is called the quantitative tab and that is every item on the report with the distribution of scores, uh, a mean, a standard deviation uh, for you to look at. This uh, is there for anybody who really wants to dig deeper and answer deep questions, but uh, it can be illuminating for those who are more casual uh, numbers people. For example, uh, it can be really interesting to see, is there a bimodal distribution that about half my students rate on the bottom on an item and the other half on the top? And is that something that's repeated over and over again? And that's kind of a clear indication that there's a split among your students about thinking about that class. And uh, that can be illuminating for you to think about uh, when you're thinking about a class and how to improve it. The qualitative tab are those open-ended comments I mentioned earlier. Uh, students open-ended comments that are, that are available to them at the end of the survey, plus any custom questions that you may ask. If you've, if you've written open-ended custom questions, they will appear here. This is a, not a great example of one, but you see it there, and they will be there. Now, if you've written uh, custom questions that are ratings, uh, you know, a scale of one to five, one to seven, something like that, that will appear back on the quantitative tab here, um, along with every individual question on the item, on the survey. The last tab here is called the segment comparison go into it. The segment comparison is a tool that may or may not be useful to you, but if you want it, it's here. What it allows you to do is compare every item on your instrument to other groups uh, that you may designate. So you see right now, your course compared to no segment I have chosen, but I click on that. I have, again, based on how my, my institution has ideas set up, I can choose other groups, for example, all sections of this course. So I'm gonna choose that. Give it a second to load here. And now I can look at how my, this particular course compared to uh, all other sections of this course. You see uh, my course is the uh, turquoise, I guess that is, and the other courses are the purple. And so I can go through and look at every item in the instrument compared to all other sections of this course. There may be times when that would be useful to you, but we don't generally encourage you to get that detailed at looking at uh, the numbers in comparison to other groups, because again, the numbers have to be interpreted in context. Remember the speedometer we were talking about earlier? So, but it's there if there's some need for you to do, or if you're really trying to understand patterns and make sense, deeper sense of things, that tool is there available for you. So that's the basic report. I'm gonna click back on the summative tab and show you the report here. Now this report is based on our full uh, granddaddy premium product, the, the diagnostic feedback tool. That's the one that we recommend that you use most of the time to collect this kind of rich data that you can then use to improve your course. Now you also have the option, however, of using something we call teaching essentials or learning essentials, which are shorter instruments, but that, that, that don't give you this much detailed feedback. Teaching essentials uh, asked students just seven teaching, their observation of the frequency of seven teaching methods, plus these other general kind of questions, and it doesn't ask about learning objectives. 
and learning essentials instrument is kind of the opposite of that. It asks students to rate their progress on learning objectives, but doesn't ask about teaching methods. And so you don't get that formative feedback from that one either. So the diagnostic feedback tool that you see here gives you this full report. Teaching essentials and learning essentials gives you, gives you some useful feedback, but not nearly as rich and full as you get from diagnostic feedback here. Now you may rotate your use of diagnostic feedback with some other tools or there may be some reason your campus has elected one or the other, but just want you to understand that there are those three different instruments and you may or may not have a choice in which one you use. If you do have a choice, I would recommend you use uh, diagnostic feedback. Up at the very top of the screen, you'll see something called trends analysis that I want to show you that's a really useful new tool. You see it's designated as still in beta. And you click on that and that's going to take every item on your report and show you every semester over time. And in our sandbox here, we only have two courses, but imagine you've got 20 courses. They're all gonna show up here um, in this, this timeline. And if I click on it, it takes me into a more detailed view of that particular um, item over semesters and by course. So it's a way of just looking at your data over time, longitudinally, trying to make sense of are my scores going up? Are they going down? Are they staying the same? Does that mean anything? You'll notice this little popped up here asking you for uh, inf feedback on this particular tool and how we can make it better. And I would encourage you to do that because again, it's in beta. You may see that change over time. But that's right there on the home page uh, after you log in up at the top called trends analysis. And I would encourage you to, to take, check that out. So that is uh, about a half an hour explanation of what a report means and what, what you can do with it. Uh, a couple of other things, and then I want to really encourage you to ask any questions you have. A couple of other things is don't look at this all by yourself. I would encourage you to have conversations with someone else about these reports, whether that's a colleague, uh, your chair, the director of your center for teaching and learning, or another, another instructional designer, you know, your teenage son, uh, anybody. <laughs> because when you talk with somebody else about what this is saying, when you talk about it out loud, that that helps you reflect on the content. And of course, the more knowledgeable the other person is, the better. But I was only halfway kidding when I said your teenage son, because just talking about, well, students said this, but that doesn't make sense to me because this happened. When you, when you start saying those kind of things out loud, it helps clarify things for you and help you make sense or helps you generate questions that you need to go uh, think about and ask deeper. So find you someone to talk about these things regularly. Don't just glance at them and then close the window and never look at them again. But what are students trying to tell you here? What are the patterns across multiple courses and multiple semesters? And what can I do with that information to make my course better? That's what this is designed for and that's what we really hope that you will do with this kind of information. So what questions do you have about anything I've said or anything that you see in your reports or anything at all? Now is the time to ask the question. Ask away either in the chat or ask if in the chat if you want to open your mic. I'd be glad to listen to you that way, whatever works for you. While we're waiting for folks to ponder the question side of things, one thing I was going to add, David, is on here you also see the response rate um, for this particular course in the survey. And then um, on the previous screen, uh, there is the ability to see the response rates in real time, which is a little bit separate from report interpretation, but it's combined uh, in general to the idea that, that going again back to that, the speedometer, uh, how representative is this information and to to foster and encourage you know again that students uh, do have a role and a voice but you know making sure that you know if you teach us a, a small enrollment course or you have a, a small uh, response rate a low response rate um, to consider those as well as you're as you're pondering the takeaways and the things that you might do differently um, but then also again not to overemphasize that we just just wanted to highlight that the response rates are there and that there's some um, some careful thought into 
what is a good response rate and how to interpret or make use of those response rates. Thank you, Jay. Jake, so we, a question from Elizabeth. We can see our objectives and the way those are worded. Is there a place we see the wording of the list of questions that students are asked? I've never seen what students are answering on their site. Certainly, uh, there is no secret behind that. Uh, in fact, this is a good time to answer the question or to tell you where the other resources are. So if you go to our website, ideaedu.org, uh, and then look under resources and events, you'll see support for current clients. And then the first option there is what you are, IDEA powered by Campus Labs. And I didn't say that earlier, so let me let make sure you understand that. IDEA is a nonprofit institution that's been around about 40 years. It started with this idea uh, or this student ratings of instruction instrument. We do a lot of other things, but that's uh, one of our main uh, resources. But we decided a while back that we weren't a technology company, so we partnered with Campus Labs to actually deliver the platform. So that's why you hear about IDEA and Campus Labs. The idea, the instrument is ours, the technology is Campus Labs. But if you click on that one, that takes you into uh, a bunch of resources for you, for you about um, understanding and administering the survey. And one of the things that you will see as I, I click, let me back up because I did that fast, but going into the getting started area, you'll see the, the four instruments there and the first one diagnostic feedback. I click on that and right at the bottom of that, you see, see the diagnostic feedback sample survey. So you can see the questions there. They're also in the instrument itself in terms of the, um, the actual, learning objectives and the teaching methods are worded the same way in the student survey as you see in your report. You just don't see the instructions that become before it. Does that answer your question, Elizabeth? So would, would I please show again where to change the screen from the relevant objectives to see Professor feedback or ratings? I'm not sure I understand the question. Let me go into a report. So I see uh, in, the, in the middle, the relevant objectives, the summary score of all the relevant objectives. If I click on that, I see the individual uh, ratings, the individual uh, scores. And then, is that what you meant? Sue? So if you don't mind opening your mic, that might be easier if you have one available. So this is the home screen, the, the summative tab. Where Are I you able to hear me? I do. Okay, yay. <clears throat> the gray um, tab of the progress on relevant objectives turned to a blue color. Right, when I hover over it, just what oh. I'm doing now. But uh -huh. then it said something about um, um, teaching effectiveness or um, the three columns changed to something about teaching. Are you talking about the formative tab? That's this tab here where I go to see here? Is no, that wasn't it. It was, um, the three columns were still there, but the middle one had something about teaching. Hmm. Jake, you, can you help me out? Do you know? Could it be the, uh, the overall items, the, the summative questions? Yeah, was it this? Yes. Ah, that's okay. It. Let me go back and explain what that is again. So okay. that's over on the, thanks for the question, Sue. So on the far right is your ratings of summative questions. And I clicked on that box and that opened up these questions. So there, there are two questions here. The overall, I rate the instructor as an excellent and teacher. Overall, I rate the course as excellent. And then this box on the far left is an average of those two. 
Okay, and, thank and, you. <laughs> and then that, that average is repeated here on the home page. That's what this box is over on the right. Okay. That makes sense? Yes, thank you very much. Certainly. What else? Any questions at all, folks? Glad to answer it. And we, you know, we will stay here as long as you want, or if you think you've gotten all you need, I won't be offended if you just disappear. Uh, I want you to get to your grading and your shopping and your napping or whatever else you have to do, to do on this Friday. Uh, but we will stay here as long as you want answering questions. So feel free to, to ask them. I had a quick uh, follow up. Uh, is there a way for people to, to stay in touch with us or for us to stay in touch with them, for example, to send the recording? What's the best way to do that? Absolutely. And let me so, show you that what I actually want you to do is to hopefully sign up for um, our regular feedback. We will occasionally email you um, ideas for improving teaching and learning along with updates if you will sign up here and i'm not sharing the right screen let me grab that here for you i'll only take you a second to do this tinyurl.com slash idea training and if you'll sign up for that we'll send you occasional ideas stories about teaching and learning tips for getting uh, better at your pedagogy or for understanding your report and then you know any necessary uh, updates from idea. We won't do it a lot. Don't worry. We're not going to bug you with inundate you with emails all the time. But um, if you'd like to get that regular information from us, that's the way you do it there. So I, I would encourage you to take a second to do that. It'll only take you 30 seconds to sign up online there. What else can we answer for you? Again, there are many resources on the website and we have new ones coming all the time. Uh, you should have someone on your campus that can help you uh, understand your reports a little bit more, but if you, um, if you don't or you're not getting what you, you need there, feel free to contact IDEA. All our contact information is right there on the website and ask us questions and we'll do all we can to help you get the most out of the reports as well. Again, these reports are designed, they were initially designed to help you improve your instruction, and that's the primary tool, but we realize too that uh, you also are, are used frequently for faculty evaluation, so you may have some questions about that, and how to interpret it, and best practices. We're glad to help you with all of that. Any other questions? Bob Byron, Elizabeth J. Melody, Sue, or any groups. I think we may have at least one uh, group participating today from somewhere. And Jake, I'll give you a last chance to think of anything that, uh, that you can think of that we may have glossed over here too quickly or wasn't clear, or you wanna add? No, I think it's a good, a good quick overview, you know, 30 minutes at the end of the semester um, to, to ponder. Hopefully folks do have access to their, their surveys in the, the pretty short term so that they, it's something that can be of use even, you know, well before the next semester starts. Great. Well, seeing no more questions, I guess we will end it here. But again, we are available to you anytime. Feel free to, to reach out. We're here to help you improve your instruction and um, everything else on your class. Melody, yours is gonna be a while. Okay, well, sorry, but hopefully that's early in the next semester so you can still consider it before you, you get too deep in the next semester. All right, happy holidays and happy weekend, everyone from IDEA. Have a great one. Thank you for coming today.